View other drafts. The governing body for health and safety in the workplace for the United States is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. Official title, Occupational Safety and Health Administration website, https colon slash slash www.osha.gov. OSHA is part of the United States Department of Labor. It was created by the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970 to ensure safe and healthful working conditions for workers by setting and enforcing standards and by providing training, outreach, education, and assistance. OSHA covers most private industries in the United States, as well as state and local government employees. However, it does not cover minors, some transportation workers, many public employees, and the self-employed. OSHA sets standards for workplace safety and health, including standards for exposure to hazardous chemicals, noise, and other hazards. It also enforces these standards by conducting inspections of workplaces. If an employer is found to be violating OSHA standards, they may be fined or face other penalties. OSHA also provides training and education to workers and employers on workplace safety and health. It also offers a variety of resources to help employers comply with OSHA standards. I hope this information is helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Questions. Sources. Sing the answer to previous question, document the safety guidance or standards about electrical safety from the website. Be Using the answer to previous question, document the safety guidance or standards about electrical safety from the website. Be sure to include anything that could prevent electrical hazards. Regenerate draft. BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. BARD privacy notice. Here are some electrical safety guidance and standards from OSHA. To energize the equipment before working on it. This means turning off the power and locking out the equipment so that it cannot be turned back on accidentally. Use lockout and tagout procedures to ensure that the equipment remains de-energized. This involves placing locks and tags on the equipment to indicate that it is not to be used. Use insulating protective equipment, IP. This includes gloves, sleeves, boots, and hard hats that are designed to protect you from electrical shock. Maintain a safe distance from energized parts. This means staying at least 10 feet away from energized power lines and other electrical equipment. Here are some additional tips for preventing electrical hazards. Keep electrical cords and cables in good condition. Do not use cords that are frayed, damaged, or overloaded. Do not overload electrical outlets. Plugging too many appliances into one outlet can cause a fire. Use the correct type of plug for the outlet. Do not force a plug into an outlet that is not the right size. Be aware of your surroundings when working with electricity. Do not work near water or in wet conditions. If you see an electrical hazard, report it to your supervisor immediately. You can find more information about electrical safety on the OSHA website, https colon slash slash www.osha.gov slash electrical. Building codes. Building codes are the legal regulations that must be followed to meet the minimum acceptable level of safety for building and structures. The building regulations ensure the heath, safety, and protection of the public during construction and occupancy of the buildings. The building regulations are determined by the appropriate authorities and can vary depending on the location. Question. Perform an internet search for your local building codes.
List of some of the building codes that is adopted locally. Type your answers here. BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. BARD Perform an internet search for your local building codes. List of some of the building codes that is adopted locally. Key following is a list of some of the building codes that are adopted locally in Los Angeles, California. Califor the following is a list of some of the building codes that are adopted locally in Los Angeles, California. California Building Code, CBC. California Electrical Code, CEC. California Fire Code, CFC. California Plumbing Code, CPC. California Mechanical Code, CMC. California Green Building Standards Code, CAL Green. Los Angeles City Building Code. Los Angeles County Building Code. These codes are adopted to ensure the safety and health of occupants of buildings, as well as to protect the environment. They cover a wide range of topics, including structural design, fire safety, electrical safety, plumbing, and energy efficiency. For example, the CBC includes requirements for the design and construction of buildings to resist earthquakes and other natural disasters. The CFC includes requirements for fire alarm systems, sprinklers, and other fire safety features. The CEC includes requirements for the installation and maintenance of electrical wiring and equipment. The CPC includes requirements for the installation and maintenance of plumbing systems. The CMC includes requirements for the installation and maintenance of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC, systems. And CAL Green includes requirements for energy efficiency, water conservation, and sustainable materials. If you are planning to construct or renovate a building in Los Angeles, you should consult with the local building department to determine which codes apply to your project. The building department can also help you to understand the requirements of the codes and to obtain the necessary permits. Los Angeles, California, USA, Update Location Environmental Regulations When any equipment has reached the end of life, it should be disposed correctly. The equipment may be donated, recycled, or destroyed per environmental regulations. Question A business has replaced 50 laptops and looking for a way to dispose of them properly. Find a local facility that can dispose of them properly and describe what will the local facility do with the laptops. Type your answers here. Reflection questions. In your opinion, what is the most important safety rule when servicing a computer? Explain. BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. A business has replaced 50 laptops and looking for a way to dispose of them properly. Find a local facility that can dispose of them properly and describe what will the local facility do with the laptops.
Here are some local facilities that can dispose of laptops properly. Recycle My Machine at 12124 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California 90025, USA. It has a 4.7 star rating on Google Maps. Greenlee Electronics Recycling and Data Destruction at 2420 West 3rd Street, Los Angeles, California 90057, USA. It has a 4.7 star rating on Google Maps. Cal E-Waste Recycle LLC Los Angeles Electronics Recycling Center Free E-Waste Drop-Off at 7871 Alabama Avenue Unit No. 1, Canoga Park, California 91304, USA. It has a 4.4 star rating on Google Maps. Glendale Recycling Center at 1850 Glendale Boulevard, Los Angeles, California 90026, USA. It has a 4.2 star rating on Google Maps. E. Waste LA, Data Destruction Company, at 7222 Valjean Avenue, Van Nuys, California 91406, USA. It has a 4.6 star rating on Google Maps. According to Recycle My Machine, they will test your laptop for reuse. If it is still reusable, they will send it to charity. If it is not reusable, they will take it apart manually and recycle the components. Any components that are still viable will be reused. Recycling your laptop is important for environmental and security reasons. It helps to reduce the amount of waste that goes to landfills and it protects your personal data from being accessed. Google Maps Places Los Angeles, California, USA Update Location In your opinion, what is the most important safety rule when servicing a computer? Explain. In my opinion, the most important safety rule when servicing a computer is to always turn off the power and unplug the computer before opening the case. This will prevent electric shock and overheating, which can damage your components or cause injuries. Even if you are only working on a minor repair, such as replacing a memory module, it is important to disconnect the power source. This is because there may still be residual power in the system that could cause an electric shock. Additionally, if you accidentally touch something inside the computer while the power is on, it could cause a short circuit that could damage your components. To properly turn off a computer, follow these steps. Save any work that you are on. Close all open programs. Click on the Start button and select Shut Down. Wait for the computer to completely shut down and turn off the power supply switch on the back of the computer. Unplug the power cord from the wall outlet. Once the computer is completely powered down, it is safe to open the case and begin servicing the computer. Here are some other safety tips to keep in mind when servicing a computer. Be careful not to touch any sensitive components inside the computer, such as the motherboard or the CPU. Use proper tools and techniques to avoid damaging any components. If you are unsure about how to do something, consult a professional computer technician. By following these safety tips, you can help to prevent accidents and injuries when servicing a computer. Select play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript.
1.3.2.2 Video Demonstration, Computer Disassembly. Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. Hello everyone, can you believe it? We're here to disassemble a perfectly good and working computer. But that's how we learn, and that's how we're going to practice becoming the best IT professional. Let's get started on disassembly. To begin, I'm going to power off the computer. Then I'm going to disconnect the power cable from the power supply. Commonly, we like to depress the power button and hold it down for a little bit longer That'll get rid of any excess power on the system. On the back of the computer, now we can remove all these video and audio cables, mice and keyboard. Also, I'll unplug my network cable as well. Network cable, mouse, keyboard. I can remove the audio cable, and then even my video connector. The computer is completely unplugged, and now we're going to lay it on its side, and we're going to get to the internals. So remove the mouse and keyboard to make it easy. When I get the computer on its side, I can remove the screw on the back. You can either do this by hand or use a screwdriver if you need. Then we can slide the case cover off. We'll start again on the inside. With my case opened up and laying on its side, we get to start with our hard drive. My solid state hard drive is mounted right here. We're going to zoom in on that, and we're going to disassemble. First, what we're going to do is take off the SATA power connector, which is right here. We can safely pull that straight back and disconnect. Then we have the SATA data connector, which I can also pull and disconnect. At this time, I can now unscrew that hard drive, and we can pull it right out of there. I'll take the corresponding screwdriver with the correct bit, and we'll remove these screws that are holding it on. With the first screw removed, you can hold it up so it doesn't drop, and take out the next screw that's holding it in. Commonly, your hard drives will have four screws to remove, but for the sake of recording, I've got two. Hard drive is out, and the screw is removed. So at this point, we're going to continue on, and we're going to do the optical disk drive. The optical disk drive is up here at the top of my case. So we'll zoom in on that next, and we'll remove it. So let's continue on and remove this optical drive. Now this is the best that you are going to get in this tight space. We've got the power supply here. We've got the optical drive right next to it. So what we're going to do here is remove the SATA power connector from our optical drive, which is this one. I can grab it with my fingers right there and pop it out. And right behind that, we have the smaller SATA data connector. So I'm going to remove that as well. So just grabbing it. And pulling it straight out as well. So the power and the data is now disconnected from this SATA optical disk drive. But we've got a couple things to get it out though. Number one is I've got two screws, which you can see one here and one here, that we need to remove. So we'll remove those two screws. As we're removing these two screws, I want you to think about something. The power supply is right behind this optical drive. And we've got this optical drive that was screwed in. Which way is this optical drive going to go to get out of our case? This can go back into the power supply, or are we going to pull this thing out the front? That's the conversation that you got to have when you work on these cases. So for us, screws are out, optical drive is ready to go nowhere. What we need to do is turn this case so the front is facing up, and we need to pop off the front plastic of our case. Let's do that next.
So that optical drive needs to move. It's not going anywhere. It's not going back and it's not going forward. So what we need to do is pop off the front plastic part of our case. I've got three of these over here and there's three on the other side. I'll show you this. All I do is pull them up. As I pull them up, I can push that case forward and I can pop off this front cover. And now, thing, one of the thing has popped off, what I can do is take this optical drive and I'm gonna push it from the back. Look at that. It's gonna slide right out for me. Optical drive out. Let's continue on and go through more components of disassembly. So let's continue and we're gonna remove the power supply. In order to do this, we need to disconnect it from the motherboard. Up here at the top, you can see I have a 24 pin main power supply connector to my motherboard. It's got that little lever right there. We're gonna pull that back and pull this thing straight up off the motherboard. I'll get my hand in there, put my finger on that little lever, and then I'm gonna grab it and pull straight up. Got it. There you go, with the lever and all. You can see that clip on there. We're not done yet though, because if we take a closer look inside this case, we see that there's this other ATX CPU power connector. You may not have this on the board. It really does depend on your computer. But this one also has a little lever. This lever you can see right down over here. So let's zoom in on that, and we'll get this one removed as well. So we're zoomed in. You can see it better. It's a four pin right there, and we see that it's got that little clip on it as well. So I'm going to reach my hand in there, try to not to obstruct the camera as best as possible, which is not easy because there's a very small space to work in here. And I'm going to grab that thing, and I'm going to put my thumb on that lever and pull straight up, and we got it. That's the four pin ATX CPU power connector. It gives us extra power to the board for our components. So we're good on the power disconnects. We're going to zoom out a little bit, and we're going to take out some adapter cards and finish off our disassembly. We've got one adapter card here, and that's our video card. And we're going to remove this thing. In order to remove it, what I need to do is take off this. What is this? This is going to be our mounting bracket. When I remove this mounting bracket, it will allow us to actually lift up and pull out this graphics card. So I'll take my screwdriver, and we're going to grab that screw on that mounting bracket. And we're going to unscrew it, like so. With that being unscrewed, which now it's out, I can go ahead and I can just lift this off. And this secures any cards I have so they're not going to shift or be removed. So at this time I'm going to reach into that computer case and my graphics card has a little lever on the bottom. This lever is very difficult to see so we're going to do some camera movement here. So here's our better angle. We've got a diagonal view of this graphics card and if we look closely down there, we'll try not to block the light as we get in the small space. There's this little black lever right here. And if I try to pull up on the card right now, like right here, and pull up, it's not going anywhere. So what I'm going to have to do is pull this lever out to the left, which is towards my little yellow wand there. Then I can lift straight up on the card, and it'll come out of the PCI slot that I have. So I'll reach in there, so you can see it. I'll pull that lever right there. Then pull it towards me. I can lift the card straight up. And now it pops out. And you can see where the lever was actually holding on to, right down there, over here which comes in handy so your card won't fall out of the slot. So we'll pull that card out. It's gone. So we'll continue onwards now and we're going to work on that power supply. We may have already removed our power supply connectors off the motherboard, but it's time to remove the power supply from the case. In order to do this, I'm going to tilt my power supply up in the case and we're going to take a look at a couple screws. So we've got screws of screw number one, screw number two, screw number three, and screw number four. And we need to take these out in order to get access to slide this power supply out of the case. And I think you can tell which way it's going to slide out. You see how the metal of the case is? It's not going towards me. It's going to slide out into the case. So it's going into the case. So let's do this. I'm going to take my screwdriver and let's unscrew. This is that moment where you stop and you make sure it's not going to fall literally into the case at a vertical angle. My power supply here actually has a lever, and the lever I'll show you in a little bit is down below, and that's keeping the power supply locked in, so even now it's not shifting when there's one screw left. Now that's not going to be common for every single computer case, so keep in mind, for you it might be a good time to hold on to the power supply as you take out your last screw. 
I can do the same, because you've already seen the other ones in video. So the last screw is out, and take a look. My power supply is not moving. It's still locked, and that's because of another angle with the video I'm going to show you. If you look closely, down here at the bottom corner of my power supply, right over here, that's a locking lever. That is preventing my power supply from moving into the case. So what I'm going to have to do is take my hand, I'm going to depress with my thumb on that lever, see how it moves, you push down, and the case is going to be able to allow our power supply to come right out, and there it goes. So we're going to remove the rest of the connectors, and we've got these front panel connectors inside of here. I've got one for audio off the front panel, I've got one for USB, and I've got another one for the front panel power, as well as going to be a power LED, reset switch, even a speaker for BIOS. So all we need to do is just take on these and lightly pull them straight up. And there goes our audio. There goes our USB. And lastly, our front panel connectors for our power button, reset button, speaker, and more. Next, we need to get the memory out, which is going to be our RAM, our random access memory, which are two memory chips here. We see them right here and right here. So we're going to zoom in on those and we're going to take a look at how to remove those from our computer case. Now that we've located and we've zoomed in on our two RAM modules, we're going to release the locking tabs on both of the memory modules on the motherboard and that's on both sides. After that, we can gently lift each of these out of the motherboard slots and we can place them on our anti-static mat for safety. So I'll go ahead and I'll pop the one locking lever. So you pull it down, the one on the other side, which is a small case. And I can lift that RAM module out and put it on our mat. I can do the same thing for the second module. Pull down the locking levers and then lift that card right out. Awesome. At this time, we're finished with our disassembly. There's always more that we could take out, but due to the fragile nature of our remaining items, I've got a CPU with a CPU heatsink and fan, and I've got the motherboard itself with the case fans. This completes the disassembly of our computer tower. One dot three dot two dot three lab disassemble disassemble a computer. In this lab, you will disassemble a computer.
Lab, disassemble a computer. Introduction. In this lab, you will disassemble a desktop computer using safe lab procedures and the proper tools. Use extreme care and follow all safety procedures. Familiarize yourself with the tools you will be using in this lab. The goal of this lab is to separate the components and practice using tools probably. The separated components can be used in a later lab for assembly. This lab does not include removing the motherboard, CPU, and cooling device from the computer due to the replacement cost of these items. If possible, allow students to remove these components from spare or broken computers that are kept in the classroom for part identification and demonstration. Part 1, Preparation Part 2, Parts Removal Recommended Tools Safety Glasses Anti-Static Wrist Strap Anti-static mat. Flat head screwdrivers. Phillips head screwdrivers. Torx screwdrivers. Hex driver. Part retriever. Thermal compound. Can of compressed air. Cable ties. Parts organizer. Containers for storing computer parts. Anti-static bags for electronic parts. Instructions Part 1, Preparation Step 1, Power off the computer and remove peripheral items. Turn off the power to the computer and disconnect the power cable from the wall and the power supply. Remove all external peripheral items, such as Ethernet cables, monitors, keyboards. Step 2, Open the computer case. Generally, computer cases are held in place using one or a combination of these three ways below. Screwless. These cases are held together using metal or plastic clips. To open the case, the clips are released by pressing buttons or switches to remove the side panel. Screw. Locate all the screws that secure the side panels to the back of the computer. These screws are located at the edge of the case. Use the proper size and type of screwdriver to remove the side panel screws. Do not remove the screws that secure the power supply to the case. Put all the screws in one place, such as a compartment in the parts organizer or small cup. Label the compartment or cup with a piece of masking tape on which you have written side panel screws. Remove the side panels from the case. 2015 Cisco and or its affiliates. All rights reserved. Cisco. Thumbscrew. These cases come with screws that you can tighten or loosen with your fingers. Loose the thumbscrews to remove the side panel. The thumbscrews are located on the edge of the computer case. If you have a camera or smartphone, take a picture of the inside of the computer case to be used as a reference when reassembling the computer. Questions. What type of screwdriver did you use to remove the screws? Type your answers here. How many screws secured the side panels? Type your answers here. Step 3. Anti-static wrist strap. Put on an anti-static wrist strap. Connect one end of the conductor to the wrist strap. Clip the other end of the conductor to an unpainted, metal part of the case. If you have an anti-static mat, place it on the work surface and put the computer case on top of it. Ground the anti-static mat to an unpainted, metal part of the case. Part 2, Parts Removal In this part, you will remove the internal drives and data cables, adapter cards, memory modules, and power supply. Note, some manufacturers do not use screws to fasten components inside of the computer case. Some may use plastic or metal clips that fasten components to the computer chassis. When in doubt, perform a web search for manufacturer of the computer case or computer system. Note, be careful to remove only screws that are holding components in place, and not the screws that hold components together. Step 1. Remove the hard drive. Locate the hard drive. 
Carefully disconnect the power and data cables from the back of the hard drive. Question. Which type of data cable did you disconnect? Type your answers here. Locate all the screws that secure the hard drive in place. Use the proper size and type of screwdriver to remove the hard drive screws. Put all the screws in one place and label them. Questions. What type of screws secured the hard drive to the case? Type your answers here. How many screws secured the hard drive to the case? Type your answers here. Is the hard drive connected to a mounting bracket? If so, what type of screws secure the hard drive to the mounting bracket? Type your answers here. Caution, do not remove the screws that hold the hard drive together. Gently remove the hard drive from the case. Look for a jumper reference chart on the hard drive. If there is a jumper installed on the hard drive, use the jumper reference chart to see if the hard drive is set for a master, slave, or cable select, CS, drive. Place the hard drive in an anti-static bag. Question. What is the jumper setting of the hard drive? Type your answers here. Step 2. Remove optical drive. Locate the optical drive, Blu-ray, DVD, etc. Carefully disconnect the power and data cables from the optical drive. Remove the audio cable from the optical drive if there is one connected. Questions. What kind of data cable did you disconnect? Type your answers here. Is there a jumper on the optical drive? What is the jumper setting? Type your answers here. Locate and remove all the screws that secure the optical drive to the case. Put all the screws in one place and label them. Place the optical drive in an anti-static bag. Question. How many screws secured the optical drive to the case? Type your answers here. Step 3. Remove the power supply. Locate the power supply. Find the power connections to the motherboard. Gently remove the power connections from the motherboard. Question. How many pins are there in the motherboard connector? Type your answers here. Disconnect the power cables from any case fans. Disconnect the power cable from the video card if it requires one. Disconnect any other power supply cables from where they were connected. Question. If there were additional cables disconnected, to what were they connected? Type your answers here. Locate and remove all the screws that secure the power supply to the case. Put all the screws in one place and label them. Question. How many screws secure the power supply to the case? Type your answers here. Carefully remove the power supply from the case. Place the power supply with the other computer components. Step 4. Remove adapter cards. Locate any adapter cards that are installed in the computer, such as a video, NIC, or sound card. Locate and remove the screw that secures the adapter card to the case. Put the adapter card screws in one place and label them. Carefully remove the adapter card from the slot. Be sure to hold the adapter card by the mounting bracket or by the edges. Place the adapter card in an anti-static bag. Repeat this process for all the adapter cards. Note, be very careful when removing video adapters. There is often a locking tab on the slot that must be released before the card can be removed. List the adapter cards and the slot types below. Adapter card Slot type. Blank line, no additional information. Step 5, remove memory modules. Locate the memory modules on the motherboard. Questions. What type of memory modules are installed on the motherboard? Type your answers here. How many memory modules are installed on the motherboard? Type your answers here. Remove the memory modules from the motherboard. Be sure to release any locking tabs that may be securing the memory module. 
hold the memory module by the edges and gently lift out of the slot. Put the memory modules in an anti-static bag. Step 6. Remove data cables. Remove all data cables from the motherboard. Make sure to note the connection location of any cable you disconnect. Question. What types of cables were disconnected? Type your answers here. You have completed this lab. The computer case should contain the motherboard, the CPU, and any cooling devices. Do not remove any additional components. End of document.